이 선수 최근 당연히 떨어지죠. 당연히, 당연히 떨어져요. 아니 당연한 거 아니에요. 데뷔한 지 1년 됐어. 1년 됐는데 얘, 얘 보고 페이커 이겨줘. 말이 됩니까? 아니죠. 근데 저희는 그렇게 생각합니다. 저희 팀의 정체성 한 선수가 아니에요. 팀 리키도 혼다. 저희는 그게 정체성. 저희는 APA가 페이커를 상대한다. 그게 아니라 팀 리키드 혼다가 페이커를 상대한다. Our identity is Team Liquid Honda. We don't expect APA, a one-year rookie, to beat Faker. Instead, together we will manage that task, and that's exactly what TL have been doing, or have done, at least in one of the three games so far. Team play and focusing on the win condition. They were laser focused on the top side of the map. They were willing to sacrifice everything on the bottom side of the map in this game to throw it all to try and get this victory versus T1 versus the world champions. And I have to say a lot of credit to Umpty in that game as well. When you're on a r e x i it is so hard to not die in late game team fights. And he was able to snowball the lead really well. Let's get into it though, because guess what? Talia will not be in this game. We were talking about this in the break, saying if you're TL, do you just ban Oriana, Azir, and Talia? I think you do. I actually think that's that's what you got to go for. We saw in game number one that the pressure bot lanes aren't as powerful as they once were. Because 100%, if you're T1, you be on Oriana. This is a no-brainer, and TL they got to know this, so I'm sure they have something ready. All right, so much up and available now, and Team Liquid this time around on the red side. We're gonna have to do the two-side trade. They did a little shout out there with the Twisted Fate. There's no way you blind a Twisted Fate though uh, into Zayas. So let's grab bottom lane first. The Callista was quite impactful. But then what do you pair with it? Do you need to slam something very quickly here for APA? He can always rely on a Ziggs or something later. You could, if you want to, you know, drop mid lane. Or maybe you go with the Ziggs oh, now. Okay, okay, they're not going to go for it later. They don't think that T1 are going to forget about it. <laughs> and so they they should. It now. Yeah. <laughs> and we've seen Oriana winning the Oriana into Aurelian Soul matchup a, a couple of times. The caps uh, exemplifying how that matchup can go. So instead, the Ziggs an early pick here for TL. It's only the second time we've seen them on the red side this series. Games two and three were TL on the blue. And here, once again, T1 on blue side get their center. All right. Is it going to be followed with Caria's Tom Kench or Caria's Orn? They go the Orn side of it. Now, Renata is available for TL if they wanted to snatch a Renata and go with that power duo on the bottom side. I mean, we saw how much pressure BLG, of course, you know, it's Elkin on, but they were able to put it onto that Senna with that exact matchup. And I don't think Renata will survive another round of bans. Oh, Makes what? sense though, because compared to the Kench, uh, which Ooh. I think Inter specifically, the poke of Ziggs doesn't have nearly as much value. With Orn, you can at least guarantee start fights. T1 though, Guma, no notes. He's been having a great series, he's been trying his very best, but particularly Faker and Carrier, I think, really, really struggling. This time around on the Oriana, we need to see a big bounce back from the GOAT himself. Tournament hasn't been necessarily going the best for him, and specifically into APA, onto one of his one tricks, a lot of players have kind of thought that they could take it and really struggled. And Core JJ gonna be on the rel. He opts for that instead to be the main point of engage. Core JJ, the team captain, the big shot caller. And with, with TL also banning out the Twisted Fate, they cannot double ban junglers now. So owner is gonna get something that can deliver a shockwave. Uh, I, you know, things that like Jarvan, the Vi, both of those junglers very, very good at combining with Orianna to deliver that guaranteed engage. And since they dropped one ban onto Zeus already with the Twisted Fate kind of protection there, it's going to leave something open. I wonder if TL will actually want the Jarvan for themselves. You already have Magna Storm, you have Cataclysm, you have the Super Mega Bomb as well, the Super Mega Inferno Bomb coming out from the Ziggs. You have a lot of zone control in team fights. For T1, as, as you say, The Vi being a possibility allows that Oriana to get onto the back line. You've got the Call of the Forge God for a long range initiation as well. So both comps actually rounding out into very powerful team fighting threats. The question is, who finds that initiation potential that can really push them over the edge? And uh, Cassante is getting picked. Uh, we just had a Twist of Fate and a Camille ban. <laughs> we know. <laughs> so, you know, Cassante is getting picked. 
We know what's happening here. This one is a no-brainer. Vi also gains a ton of value. I mean, this, this, shout is, TL, out. this is TL saying, like, Ooh. we know what's going to happen. They keep leaving open that vein. Yeah, Yon is cold, man. Yon is calling him out on the vein. Hey, are you going to do it again? I will say, though, I think probably the Jarvan is, like, it's a good combo. It's not that great into the Kalista, but I feel like it's really good at delivering the Shockwaves. I like the Jarvan as well. Instead, it looks like it's going to be jungle. Last pick here for TL. Kasante picked in first. It's like, are you going to go for the vein again? It's been kind of okay, but is it enough to deal with this Kasante <laughs> as the game goes on? The <laughs> smolder call out from Guma as well against Jan. Both the AD carries having a bit of fun as we go through this series. Right. Yeah, lives on the line. It is Vayne locked in. Ooh. T1 as well can look for owners. Poppy once yeah, again. Poppy is definitely much better against the Kalista. Then the Jarvan is isn't as good at delivering the shockwave, but no necessarily need a delivery when you've got Faker at the at the helm. Not only that, but with the Orn, you also at least have a way to guarantee start fights. One of the f one issue, a few issues that Poppy can have is that if you are not able to get onto the enemy, and there is a lot of zone control with that Zix, can be hard to reliably find the lockdown for Umti. Not necessarily known for his insanely deep champion. Has a, pulled out a couple of pocket picks. The Lilia is one that he always used to play. Uh, old Skarner was a personal favorite of his. We'll see what he's going to go towards. A little bit of encouragement there coming through from, uh, from I think, APA. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. on, the, uh, on the angle there. And it is going Lilia. to be the Lilia. Oh, yep. That's an empty special right there. Does mean that you have 2v2 AP, or a double AP rather, in your mid jungle 2v2. It can be a bit tricky, but he loves this pick, loves playing aggressive on it early. I think that's what that shoulder rub was. He was like, don't worry, you don't have to come mid. I'm going to survive. <laughs> Maybe that was some reassurance. Run around the map, my dear. Some reassurance. Go ahead. Go play yeah. some farming, Lilia. Especially with how Umti and APA have uh, talked about each other in interviews and whatnot. Yeah. I imagine that that's exactly what was being said. What a composition from TL at the end. Comfort for them. Ziggs in the mid lane for APA. Alongside that, the Lilia, something I think we've only seen from Yike on G2. Was against T1 as well. They lost that game. Can TL fare a little better? They have already climbed the majority of the mountain just now, the pinnacle to crest. If they can take this two and two, it all comes down to one final best of one. Well, I know, and talking to a lot of the TL members, they have so much respect for G2 and the players and the, the champion picks that they have been pulling out and, and do want to emulate their success. Let's see if TL can do it. Again, every single game is a must-win game here. Been a lot of things this time aside that haven't gone according to what was expected coming in. PSG pushing BLG. G2 not only pushing T1, but then getting a free zero sweep over TES. And TL gonna try and replicate that here as well. T1, things not going as expected as well. Uh, assumption was they'd roll through the west and make it easily into those later stages. They've already been pushed by G2, now challenged by Team Liquid. Baker has been struggling as well in this mid lane, partly because he's been targeting, targeted in pick band, but partly also because he has been underperforming compared to where he was in the LCK playoffs. Carrier getting forced away a little bit in the bottom lane here by Yon. Should have time to recall and get back to the lane. Because I want to reiterate again, so Faker has always been the most important part of this T1 roster. We saw that mm -hmm. last year when Poby came in, when he wasn't there to be the shot caller, to be the kind of core of the team, keeping everyone on track, keeping everything together. But in the LCK, this split, if it wasn't for Chovy, Faker's laning stats just in the 1v1, just with him playing against players like BDD, like Showmaker, like Zeka, he was still exceptional. Like the drop-off isn't necessarily about the fact that T1 is struggling when Faker is struggling. That's been the case for a really long time, but his individual performance just hasn't really lived up to what this player has shown, obviously, throughout the last couple of years, but specifically this spring split in the LCK was looking like his best domestic split in years, and he needs to replicate that performance here because him getting caught was the end of that last game, and his Oriana, he has almost never failed to deliver. Baker's Oriana, legendary. And we saw in the lane swap here uh, in the opening moments some some visual confirmation on Impact. So Guma was able to chase him down and stacking up souls on Impact while Impact tries to gain experience once again. 
the same strategy of trying to soak up the experience, whereas T1 always bring Zayu straight on down. Owner here on the Gromp. I've seen this before. Yeah, Umti was able to steal away his wolves, which sounds a little bit weird when you think about it, but it's the weak side of his map, so he'll be one camp up, assuming he moves into T1's blue side next. Yeah, and, and Umpty wants more. He's going to take away his own Krugs as well here on the Lilia. And it's especially even more important with this type of champion. Lilia, of course, one of those power clearing uh, AP champions from the jungle. As Impex says hello to owner again. We will charge into the Wallhammer smash coming down as well. Impact's going to have to pop the ghost here. We'll be able to escape from the clutches of owner. But he's just trying to be a nuisance. He's just trying to keep owner busy. Oh. Owner trying to call the bluff because Impact obviously is going to think that Owner is going to make gonna his check, way back. They're going to check. They're going to check. How do you get out of this, Impact? Guma's on the chase. Last Dash. embrace. Impact dashes perfectly and escapes the clutches of the T1 bot laner. And while all of this has happened, Owner isn't farming and Umpty is. He's already at four camps. Will be five after he takes these wolves. His bot lane has secured a plate and got the wave crashing in as well. Now, Carrier okay. and... Zayas will be able to get a little bit more. APA looking for the damage onto Owner. No one tanking yet. Flashes away from the heroic charge. It's Faker tanking. Last Embrace comes down. And the tower aggro juggling from T1 is sublime. They find a kill in the mid lane. Reminiscent of that game number one where APA on his ace or got though very early on. Poppy is in the game again. And it's a gambit from T1. If that play doesn't work out, Owner is going to be even further behind. Still in the 1v1 feeling rough, but Faker gets a crucial early kill. Yeah, and Owner's got, a, got his three camps on his uh, red side. Got a little turned around in the opening of this one, but uh, APA again going down for the first blood. Again, all the focus towards mid lane and towards getting Faker to a very stable start of a game. Once again, we saw how, how well that turned out for T1 in game number one. One of the big things that we've talked about a lot is the Cassante, the safety it provides you as core JJ. It's going to run into owner here, but probably decide that he doesn't want to uh, really deal with that. But the power of the vein, as we see there, in the plates is so big because she can just auto away and away and away, offers way more pressure on the actual turret in the plates than a Cassante does early on in the game. All right. On the swap back here from Team Liquid, Jan facing down Caria as Umpty goes into another clear because of the early wolf start and the early wolf respawn. I mean, the important part for Umpty is getting to that level six, right? As soon as you have the Lilting Lullaby, you flash your Q and you can get a four-man, five-man sleep. If he can manage that in a fight around a Drake, all of this early game has been perfect for TL. The issue is, of course, APA is struggling a little bit in the mid lane. There'd be more plates for T1 in the bot lane than TL were able to manage to grab in the top side. All right, all the extra gold over here in mid lane. <laughs> See how much that turns into, how much it turns into in the hands of Zeus again. These T1 solo laners have been very, very powerful. And yet, we've got a, we've got a Lily over here with a pretty nice experience advantage. And now he goes for his first recall to reset. And Umpty will head down towards the bottom half of the map with Dragon already available. They definitely could. How are we feeling in terms of stress levels, Kobe? No, Pro no stress? Since, <laughs> the, good? since I saw you this morning, it was already at maximum stress. It's oh, been okay, the no. your, your, your face, your face. My face? Your face, fully stressed out, Kobe. It's, <laughs> how can you beat something that's so beautiful? That's the problem, exactly. right? Okay, 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 calm down, guys. We're trying to focus I, on the I, game. I, I can't even look at you. It's like staring at the sun. Please, <laughs> please stop. Trying to set up for a time for his owner. Not going to find anything. APA nicely hovering towards the bottom half of the map. Umpty, thanks to that power clearing, about 75% towards the level 6. Going to be a really big spike for Lilia. The second spike you're always looking towards with these AP junglers is the moment they finish their first item. Because that is when... Oh, the oh, flash against Jimmy Yushi cleanses early. Nice taking there. Jumas down. It's a 2v2 for Jan and Core JJ. Core JJ and Jan, they do it in a critical game here. Dragon is being taken already by Umpty. Of course, owner is going to trade on top side of the map. But Core JJ is not even done. Looking around here, they can call Umpty. Oh, he doesn't have W. He, Umpty stopped. Yeah. He, so he went for the Scuttlecrab to hit level six instead of going for the Dragon, okay. I believe, Kobe. Now they're looking for the flank here, trying to catch Guma as he gets back into the lane, but Guma wisely has passed and opened up through mid. He's at his Razor Beaks right now. Uh, critical timing window here then. Not made by TL, not burning down the Dragon. And the controller in the back there too gives the info to T1. Guma is able to go on mid. 
help him clear out some of those awards as well. Really good read there from T1. Kaskuma didn't have summoners. He was basically 100% dead if he does walk yep. into that lane. And Guma has been the one stalwart member that has been so insanely consistent for T1. The tournament where they really are struggling as oh, a We're seeing the pings go oh, down. No, so, will they go for it? They're trying to catch out Ona. Umti going in, lilting lullaby on two. Remember, Guma has no summoners. Fake is here for the collapse. The shockwave is on the alliance of Corda J. Umti trying to put the damage down. Corda J's running for the hills. No flash for him, no ignite either. Umti almost gets shocked into the wall as Carrier joins the battle. APA from across the side. Umti continues to dash and dive. The fates call, they're chasing Guma. And Yarn dashes over the wall. And Guma's buried in his own jungle by TL. The level six on Lilia. The advantage that Umti... Well, he's gonna take a lot of spears. I mean, that's a, that's a, that is a tanky boy. It's fine for the moment, but what a play by TL once again. It was smart by T1 to keep Guma away, but then TL found their man. But it's T1 also. This is one of the biggest pieces of criticism this team has faced over the last two years. Being over aggressive as here, core, the Q buffer into the flash. Guma Ooh. laid on the cleanse, doesn't actually, and then flashes when he's effectively yeah. already dead. He does not instantly flash after his cleanse. Everything was everything was mistimed right there, but Core JJ cool. hits. Umti has no mana. Um, yeah, Umti has smite though. So, well, yeah. I think even with Worried the Call of the Forge God, Umti coming in. There's the Call of the Forge God. It's going to land onto him. Last embrace as well. We'll root him up and Umti goes down. Guma finds him. Core JJ looking for more as Yon joins the battle from the bottom side, but he's knocked up. Carrier looking for a little bit more of this piece of the pie as Ona dashes in. Hammer shock, hammer smash. Core JJ dodges the last embrace, but can't dodge the clap back from Carrier. The previous engage over aggressive from T1. This time it's Umti that oversteps on the Lilia. Goes for the objective. Yon! Yon! No way does Yon do this to cleanse away! He tries to get out from Ona, but the steadfast presence will stop him in his tracks. It was so close to bring cover knife for Yon there. Poppy is too strong. The W goes up and Yon goes down. Both summoner spells and T1. Wait, impact? Zeus isn't tanking. He can just ghost and run away, even with the all out. I'm not sure that impact can chase him down. The condemn out. Zeus has to burn the ghost and his ultimate to escape. But T1, they just could layer and layer and layer onto this gold lead that they have. And Zeus wants even more. Gonna get the ghost. To some, yep. oh, but that is so crucial for T1 because I think that TL, thinking that they were in a position where they can keep pushing, keep pushing. You don't want to give T1 to get uh, the time to get back into the game, but they overstep. And now all of a sudden, T1 is sitting on a 2k gold lead. Guma is 100% back in the game. And TL, it all starts with this dragon. Yeah, so much money here for T1. They take out the Lilia and then they chase down Core JJ in the long chase. We already know this one. There's not too much fancy stuff that goes on, but let's take a look at the re-engage from Yon. Because Yon wants to try and get something here, sees that the health bars are low, but again, you are playing into the poppy. Oh, you can't impact. go that far up. This oh, impact. Yeah, no ghost for him. Even Q3 won't save him from this, and APA TPing in as he tries to join the fight. Zeus has only the flash to escape this. Umti joins the battle, but the Keeper's Verdict knocks him back into his place. Yeet it out as APA flashes onto the satchel. Can Zeus get in in time? Umti looking at the Lilting Lullaby, but now he's going into his demise. Last and will lock him up for a second, and the Dawning Shadow spells his doom. T1 have had enough of North America. They are smashing this early game. Look at that gold lead. The whole tower has been destroyed on the bottom side of the map while they simultaneously make the picks on the top side. This is they're, they're going in. This is the T1 that was expected. Is that not done? Uh, cool, JJ has no way out of this apart from the face call, but will it be enough? Faker, no shockwave, face call across the wall. Core JJ hits onto the red buff, but that's another ultimate use uh, just to escape. Yeah, he gets out, but that is a lot of resource being used. Anti-1 still getting access to six scrubs. And this is what a lot of people, including me, were expecting coming into today. Even with T1 struggling, their early aggression has been one of the big ways that they took down teams like Gen G, took them to five games. He dies going in, Lilting Lullaby. Onto Ono as well. Umti, watch out, Eep as he dashes forward. Yon here to join the party. Caught up in the last impress. Ono does have the flat doesn't have the flash. In fact, it only has the hex to try and escape. Umti looking for the scuttle crab. Guma keeping him at bay. It's gonna be very dangerous now for Team Liquid, even to farm their waves on the bottom half of the map. Flash from Ono can't quite land the hammer shock into the wall. 
And it's such aggression from T1 now. Eon in the mid lane, Shockwave pulls him back. He dances back underneath this tower, but Piran attacking up from Faker. Zayas finds another in the top lane, healed up as well with the piercing oh. darkness. And you just can't kill him. Zayas in the end falls to Core JJ, but Guma's here and Ona's on the chase. Core JJ locked up with a hammer smash and nowhere for him to go. He'll be dashed against the rocks by T1, 11 to 3 the score. Oh, Zayas is having fun on his vein now. 1.5k, his individual gold lead up there after those kills. Guma as well with all of this fighting. He is mad stacking these souls way, way, way quicker. He's at, he's at 50, has been involved with 9 of the 11 kills. He's just been stacking up to his heart's extent. I feel like a lot of the tension that had been building the last couple of games, game two and three in particular, so close, so back and forth. But we're watching a kind of deflate in front of our eyes as T1. This lead is starting to feel, I'm saying starting to feel in smart. It's 6K yeah. at 13 minutes. And look at the T1 comp. There's Vayne, there's Orianna, there's Orn. Yon has no flash and no hope of escaping. Zayas finds another in the mid lane set up for him. A slam dunk by Kerry. Guma now with the opportunity finished. APA trying to push out the top lane. You can see Core JJ waiting in the wings. Perhaps Faker overset. Perhaps we can find something. But meanwhile, your mid lane tier two is raised to the ground by Zayas. Kerry is looking for more. Kerry is Orn has been so clean. Zayas finishes up that tower in mid lane. He actually is just going to push the next wave. So Kerry himself is able to keep Team Liquid away from that scuttle crab. And he just calls Owner over to finish that one off as well. We do see not a lot of control left here for Team Liquid. Gonna try and set up these brushes, try and set up some traps. But T1, not going to get caught off guard, at least for now. Faker though is walking up, checking everything with the ball. Haven't checked those brushes yet. Owner is on his way. I think they might have an inkling, but he does walk up. Faker steps forward. Core JJ there with the crash down. Knocked back with the satchel. Shockwave, though, as Faker survives oh, no. for much longer than he has any damn right to. Faker's on a rampage. The Dawning Shadow helping out as Core JJ has to retreat. Still not level six. And Faker finds another. A double for him. 5-0-1 on the Oriana. You're not ganking Faker. He's ganking you. And now Yon's on the run as well through his own jungle. There goes Upti. Oops, is getting chased down by the support. Yes, he's been farming his Guma. Face checks into Yon, who flashes forward the render shutdown. And Yon can be happy with a single kill, because Ona will not let him have another. Well, Yon's going to say, Worf, I got, I got the shutdown, guys. Uh, unfortunately, the rest of the map struggling, although Faker may be punished here. Faker, you got no mana. Napier but, uh, doesn't have enough vision yeah, to control. collapse any further. Ona's, <laughs> he's hex flashing. He wants the tower, and he'll get it, but APA is now there. The Hexplos in Minefield there to help out. TP immediately by TL, but Owner, steadfast presence in the phase rush, enough for him to just waltz his way out. t ones uh, they're playing it fast and loose with this one. Carry out TPing in, got an ult for the wave clear. Okay, Gets canceled. Not back with the Tofus. Like, he can still wave clear this. Owner's hit across the side. Another, Another TP, TP. Speaker comes back. And Team Liquid realize perhaps they've overstepped a tad. The shockwave will pull Core JJ out. <laughs> and he flashes oh, right no. into Guma Yushi. And that tower was already assassinated. So T1 with full control of the top side of the map. As TL, Umpty tries to bring some focus here. He's on, he's on an objective. <laughs> but it's a bounty. Zayus is here and he's not going to let you have that. You can just chase in. They don't have the hard CC for him as he dashes and dances and weaves his way around. Umpty already so low. A final shot with the silver bolt pierces through the heart of not only Umpty, but also NA. Core JJ lands the shadowing strike to try and dash five. across the wall. He's still level five, as you say. What are you doing here, Core? <laughs> We're 16 minutes Zayus in! Gets another. Yarn almost falls to Gumiyushi. He's going he's gonna to ward it. Ah, oh, it doesn't quite hit. The piercing dark across the wall. Meanwhile, in the top lane, we're still fighting as Impact will take out Carrier. APA low on mana, but has enough for a single bomb. And now he's knocked into the wall. Baker waiting for the command attack, holding it up. Oh, Steps no! into the bush. Satchel charge away by a APA, <laughs> but there's no escape for him today. They're having fun out there now. It is an absolute massacre, and it is 1643. Four, five, six, sixteen, forty-seven. <laughs> Come oh, on, I didn't, Kobe. I didn't know what you were going for there. But <laughs> Get true. it together. That's not the focus. This series up until this point.
felt like it was it was this winnable. Game kind it of was is. The, this game, okay, yeah. okay this, this game. This, this is the one game I'll give you yeah. that feels like it's over. The other ones, <laughs> really, would you? Like, I, I, the other I'd ones, so. played so well, though. It was such a close call in a couple of those games. And all right, all right, okay, okay, okay. Hear me out. I've no. seen teams lose from a 10k from a 10k advantage. Yeah. Okay. A Atlas is hoping he keeps his hair after this one. Face call out. Shockwave on. Sacrifice to save Core JJ, who's only just tinged over to level six while Guma's nine. Zayas opening up as Umpty flashes, lilting lullaby. Finds a two man leap, Dawning Shadow gives him a bit of a shield. Zayas hits with a Mega Inferno bomb. He dances away from Impact. Owner trying to do the same, has to burn his flash. Impact still chasing in, but Zayas, ooh, the final silver bolt, not enough to prop. Impact to his grave, six feet under. Umpty can't quite land the swell seed and don't. In the end, Zayas falls in a one-for-one. -one. Guma's collapsing, though, alongside Faker APA on the wrong side of the rip. We'll have to try and dodge away. Ona looks for it. Hex flash forward. APA has a one-man army in front of him, a one-man wrecking ball in the form of this poppy. But... <laughs> He's just running! Just keep going! I feel like... Hit all him, of... APA! Hit him! Hit him! Oh! The kill! Oh. He probably has Steadfast Peasant back up, so he can just oh, run away. He's also poppy. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Yon and Core JJ are trying to kill Carrier, and they'll do it! I feel like this game is cathartic. Does it be? Does it be? All of the stress of this entire series is getting released in this final game. Everyone is just scrambling for kills. Oh, and when you're in this sort of a hole against T1, you have to, have to try and find some way out. TL very good. When they find a mistake from their enemy, they can suffocate them out of the game. The problem is now they need 11,000 gold worth of mistakes. Yeah, I, I also don't T1. think T1 is playing for suffocation. I think this is T1 taking out their anger, as uh, Kobe put it as well. Here, crucially, the ultimate from the center gives so much extra time, and particularly when you're a champion like Vayne that can just keep tumbling and tumbling, using the ghost to extend the fight. If you get enough silver with procs and you can win basically everything, as we see here, Umpty, unfortunately, oh. I was excited to see his Lily out, but it hasn't really delivered. That was such a good tumble into the back of the wall on the uh, Dragon Pit for the very quick yeah, auto the there. Tumble. All out coming out from Impact. I think Shockwave available for Faker right now as Team Liquid lose their top lane up. The chase continues. Faker wasn't even in the fight. I'm as scrambled as the teams are, I'm sure, at this you, are, you want me to take over some yeah, play-by-play? Play Carry is coming in! Support Ord! you never seen this! <laughs> and that's it. Oh, APA! Wait, he has a six package! He can get it! Dun, bombs, dun, bombs, dun, bombs, dun, bombs, dun, bombs, dun, bombs! Ignore the base! Yeah, T1 Just keep pushing on going. into mid here. Faker's going to TP Come to the bar. Come on, let him have something! Ripped out, charged in. That will be the inhib tower falling. T1 looking for more. They have six grubs, so a bunch of mites helping out with this attack. They might just go for that top lane inhib tower. APA getting chased out by Faker. No TP on either of them. The inhib in the top lane. The next target for T1. Umti looking for a lilting lullaby, but can't get close enough to hit enough people. The engage from Core JJ enough to shut That's down Zayas. There's one. The charge away, though, by Ona. Riptel didn't survive for long enough for him to get in. Ona pulls the soup in the middle of the fight. Not an advisable thing to do, I'll tell you, but he's able to escape for the moment because the last embrace will lock up impact. Bates call out. Call JJ in. Gumi Yushi has the flash away as APA joins the fray. Yon and APA will take another. Shut down! Yes! on enough for Team Liquid to get back on the board. The shutdowns <laughs> rain down, but it's still a 10,000 gold lead. No, 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 no. It's only a 10,000 gold lead. I'll push down for, what was it, 12? It is 34 kills at 21 minutes. Uh, I, <laughs> I think we keep this pace up and see how long we can go. Here's another look at uh, the fun times. The Scorch NJ goes in onto Zayas. They finally lock up and kill that Bane. Crucially here is that the fight is very segmented because T1, they don't really want to commit to this. They got the two inhibs. So it's really a one by one by one. And the gold league doesn't matter as much because Faker isn't there. And if Impact can just tank the damage, take down every single member individually. Now it's Guma for JJ and Impact weave in and out. And Yon in particular doesn't really get threatened in this fight which means they have the necessary damage output to take him down. All right, remember that clip, boys, when we have the most miraculous comeback. You come back from this position, TL <laughs> are the best team in the world, my man. Core JJ locked against the wall, Ona knocked back. 
Ona has that steadfast presence, barring up for T1 if they want to start it, and they're going to do of exactly that, are. it seems. Vision in the pit for TL, now denied by T1. Team Liquid, any last vestige of hope you feel dies if this Baron goes over to the world champs. Carry up on the back side of the pit, clearing out the control ward. Can Umpty steal? He has the flash. Can he get in? I, I mean, that, that would be critical. Verdict. Keeper's verdict. TL judge guilty by T1. Ona eats them out. The Mega Inferno bomb not enough to take it as Ona secures it with the smite. All three, Ona? Oh my god, that Poppy ultimate. Just to ensure that they will secure the Baron. And now they're going to come for a few more. Ooh. Teleport to the bottom side for Garia. He's actually focused on objective. Oh, the flank still. angle. There's a couple of members here behind enemy lines. Core trying to look. And this is what you got to do in this sort of position. The, the, third enemy is about to fall. the third enemy is about to fall. Very unlikely you come back from this sort of deficit, but Team Liquid are going to give it a hell of a try. Core JJ still on the flank. T1 don't know that he is waiting in the wings. He's waiting there for them. But the shockwave engage immediately chunks out Appa and uh, Umpty, APA low, the Magnus Storm, is it enough? Can Umpty get the Loating Lullaby down? They'll find one, Goomer full, so does Ona, but the Nexus Towers have followed suit. Impact dashing in, and they are dashing out with a flash on a ghost and a final hour. T1 only have three members left alive, but Zeus is one of those, and he's able to dance and weave his way just on the edge of Umpty's awareness. Core JJ forced back to the fountain, and T1 Zayas? will Wait, extinguish the hopes of NA and have a date with destiny against G2. We just had two hard fought, extremely close games in this series back to back and then followed up with an absolute fiesta. <laughs> what a slaughter all over the map. T1 pushing the pace of that game. And I think Zeus especially had a lot of fun in that one, but everybody involved kills all over the place. And T1 will finish the series in style. T1, they get the free one, but I think you can see it in the faces. I think you can see it on Koma's face as well. This was a team that coming into the tournament, there was always going to be a lot of expectations. They are the defending world champions. And that game two and three in particular is something that is still going to think cause a lot of doubts. And for TL, it might not have been enough, but even the first game, I think, was relatively close. I'm not going to give them the victory, but they had a great run. Some very good showings from Team Liquid. I think they'd be very proud of their MSI performance thus far. But that will not be enough to defeat world champions this time around. The road ends here for TL. All roads lead to Faker. And in the end, he's the one that guards them. You guys are trying to turn on the wrong mic. Remember, I'm Medic's on the other talking one. right now, but I don't know you if it's going out live or not. It should be. My mic is the same one I've used the whole, the whole series, guys. Can you not hear me? No, no. Okay, well, you guys talk, and I'm going to shut fine. up then. Kobe, Kobe and I are still here. Uh, in the end, Maybe they could hear him, and we just maybe, maybe I mean, that's fine, but now, now I'll be quiet. You it's guys it's completely fine. Uh, right. that, then we're the problem. Wouldn't be the first time, Kobe, in my case at least. And uh, we're going to head over to the Endless Desk to close out the day after this 3-1 victory by T1. Team Liquid falling out of MSI versus the world champion. They, they took a bow there and got yeah. quite a big applause as well from the home crowd for the Dis fight they Disappointed. Put up. I mean, yeah, I think this is a really weird series where both teams come out really disappointed, <laughs> yeah. right? Because TL obviously came into this series like, they, T Team Liquid is not the type of team who is going to be like, we took a series off EU, we're content, right? Like they mm. came in, they fully expected to take this series talking to the players. They were very confident. I think they look at the way the games went and they know that they had a chance in a lot of those games, save a few mistakes. And I think on the flip side, T1 is also very disappointed with their performance. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think you can look at it both ways. You can look at it as like, this was really hard again, just like it was versus G2. And in the game where it matters, we can count on each other mm. and bring it home. But if you look across at everything and you think about things, you know, you know, as a coach, it's team cohesion sure. and like reactions after that. I think that's why we're left with a kind of a weird taste, even though it's a victory. I mean, the really interesting thing for me with T1 is this tournament progresses is 
is I don't think we're going to 100% know which T1 shows up just because there were so many moments before their world championship run last year where they looked like they'd be dead in the water but and then they here. just pulled it out in, in best of five. So yeah. nobody should take them lightly ever. They no. are the defending world champions and then they have the ability to show up in a big moment. But I think the weaknesses that they currently have were displayed in this series as well as in the G2 series. I personally don't like their drafts. I don't think their macro is that good. They play very individual League of Legends. They are very good at that still. Yeah. But if they find a way to be more cohesive, I think then they will compete with anyone. Yeah, and I think the big thing is why I picked T1 to win was because of a lot of that, right? Like, they're really good at punishing opponents' mistakes. We saw that in the first, their series against FlyQuest, right? Um, where, like, top lane makes one mistake and mm -hmm. then they end the game in 17 minutes. But I think the big thing for me is, again, watching them in the lower part of the bracket in LCK playoffs. Mm -hmm. They came back after that home of life. 3-0 Tom Wan, which you can say whatever you, however you judge that team, right? And then they ended up going, taking the uh, Gen G to five games and looking like they were going to win that series. Mm. I don't see the same rebound from their loss in this TL perform, uh, like their performance against TL. Yeah, and if you look kind of across everything in terms of like drafting as a whole and how mm -hmm. other teams uh, have approached drafting also since their G2 series, particularly in how things are evolving. Those are also solutions you now have to find in a day, right? Yeah. In a day and a half. And I think that's also what you're getting at in terms of it's the ecosystem of this particular tournament, this particular meta evolution, and this particular mindset that you have right now if you want to be a contender and the changes that you have to make. But you would be stupid to count them out because yeah. you would just be stupid and everyone knows why. Yeah, they're going to yeah. be playing G2 in two days. So I, I'm G2, really, I don't think G2 is going to be counting them out. Are you? G2 I, did actually lose to them in the last best of five. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, like, I'm not confident that they're going to win 100%. But if I now, as an EU fan, after seeing the TES series and seeing the T1 series and seeing the T1 series today, don't say they have a chance, I am trolling. And, oh, yeah. and they have that mindset as well, and we know that because Caps came out and said it, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what I think. Can I talk about TL? Yeah, of course. We're not going to see him again at MSI. Sure. Uh, we I will think also, I think, get APA uh, as the interview for sure. first because yeah. uh, of the priority. Let me know when those are ready. You can cut me off. I'll finish later. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I think when I look at the way Team Liquid approached this MSI, I think they had a lot of good things in terms of their approach. They did win a best of five against Europe, 3-1. Yeah. Their confidence did feel high to me the whole time, which is the hardest thing traditionally for North American teams to do going into international events because scrims end up being so devastatingly hard a lot of the time. And I think they were incredibly well prepared for their opponents with multiple different strategies depending on what worked and what didn't. They ultimately couldn't get it done at the end of the day, but I do think if they run this back enough times, this is not like the best result they could hope for. I think mm -hmm. the variance yeah. of this tournament wasn't super favorable to them and I'm, I'm happy, like, as happy as you can be after losing with their performance. Yeah, you asked me the question about where are you, where do you see this when we look at kind of the trajectory that EU and mm. G2 want to be on, and I want to kick back that same question to you because um, now you're at a point, I guess, uh, with the LCS where the matchup versus EU is the, is very is very winnable. You are in a winning position in these because you've won the best of fives twice in a row, Yeah, um, which is great. So is that enough success for now? I think since 2021, actually, NA has more game wins uh, versus EU than EU does against NA. And so how important is that in kind of the road upwards? I mean, it's definitely pretty important. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to throw that away. But when you then compare the ability to win best of fives against Korean and Chinese teams, it's always, to me, always going to be an uphill battle, no matter what. But this team, to me, has shown more ability to improve than any NA team I've seen in a while because they didn't start as a super team or an import team. They've actually climbed from eighth to LCS champion and then three winning Fnatic and very close 1 3 loss against T1. Yes, and I think Lore has been able to uh, locate APA, so we'd love to hear that interview, the Verizon post game interview. So let's kick it over to the first of our interviews. APA, thank you so much for joining me after this series. Uh, obviously, not ending the way you guys expected to. But man, that was that was one hell of a fight, honestly. Uh, taking T1 to Game 4, and with the manner, I feel. What, how, what are the takeaways from this series for you? Um, 
I mean, the, the major takeaways is I actually think we did put up a very good showing against T1. I think game two should have been ours, to be completely honest with you. I think we had a, like, we said this, if we, like if each of us played like 2% better, we probably would have won game two. And then, you know, maybe we're in a different world in game five. But I, I think takeaways is just like being more decisive and then trying to stay more calm. And a lot of the game points in games two, three, and one, we're getting like so hyped because, you know, we're making a good play. We're making a pick on Faker on uh, Zeus or like whoever. And then we're just getting so hyped and calm. And then like it all just comes crashing down like a minute later. And I do feel like you're going to learn a lot, especially from series like this, that is going to help you further. When I think about the run from Team Liquid here, I feel like we saw a lot, not only from the team, but especially from you. I remember Spawn telling me that he's amazed by the way you guys are progressing, and especially you in the mid lane, empowering you so much. You got to humble down Fnatic as well. Uh, what is going to be your best memory of MSI? Um... Well, I think obviously just beating Fnatic, like winning a series, yeah. definitely just feels so insane on the international stage. Mm -hmm. And learnings maybe that you're going to carry in the LCS later, personally, but also for the team itself? Um, well, I think overall, like over the entire course of MSI bootcamp and then MSI itself, like I learned a tremendous amount about how to play like side lanes. Like I, my laning got to me substantially better. Um, so I personally learned a lot. And like, while it does suck to lose today, like, I'm looking forward to Summer Split. I mean, yeah, and obviously looking forward to Summer Split and, of course, seeing you back at Walls. Fingers crossed everything goes well for you guys. Is there anything you would like to share to the audience and fans who've been cheering for you, massively cheering for you, actually? I think um, Cap said this in a different article or a different interview the other day about, like, restoring hope to the West. And while I try to do that today, I think it shows that you know, these Eastern teams are beatable. Um, like, we scratched T1 today. Sadly, weren't able to take the win. But all of Team Liquid, like myself included, are going to work extremely hard going into the summer split, going in, and then hopefully being able to make Worlds and make a bigger splash at Worlds. We're really proud of you. Thank you so much for the run and also for this interview, APA, based of luck in the summer split. Thank you. Uh, I think a lot echoed from, from Jad by APA in that interview, right? Uh, in in his vision of, on what it means and that the work is not done. Well, also reiterate something I said right off the bat, right? Where it's like, they are not happy with this performance. Like, yeah. They came in thinking that they would be able to perform better. And I think that's absolutely, if we're talking about like a lot of the stuff you said about G2 specifically, and a lot of the reasons why I ex respect G2 for being so internally motivated as a mm -hmm. team, is that if you are in NA or EU, you have to be internally motivated because yep. you are not, you're going to get to a point where you cannot find the practice you need to improve from your opponents in domestically. And then you need to take away stuff from tournaments like this while also keeping in mind when you go back to domestic play, that you have to remain internally motivated. And that's a very hard thing to do. And I hope TL succeeds because I do think they have a good coaching staff ah, and yeah. a team that really, really wants to win. It's actually really interesting. I've been thinking about MSI as a tournament for North American teams for a while because so often you're coming off this huge high of winning the LCS split. Mm -hmm. And then you get your teeth kicked in for like three weeks and you go back and it's like, good luck in summer. We learned so much losing. Um, in fact, like since I think 2019, was the last time a spring split champion went to MSI and then won summer. Yeah. EG mm. went 15 and three in summer, but then fell apart in playoffs, potentially through year long fatigue. So like MSI is a really, really, really hard tournament because it mentally takes a massive toll on you. And that's why I'm actually encouraged by what APA said in that interview. He's mm -hmm. not saying like, oh, we learned so much. We're going to smash everyone. Um, and also, like in terms of the need for internal motivation, I think that's more true for G2 than for TL because TL struggled to win the spring split title. I think they're going to have a lot of challenges when they go back home in summer. Okay, this is re I'd love to keep talking about this. This is really <laughs> interesting. Maybe we'll get an opportunity. But Lore is standing by with Gumiyushi as well in the Verizon postgame interview. Yes. <laughs> T1 will advance to face off against G2 Esports in an epic rematch. But before that, Kumayoshi, thank you for joining me. Congrats on advancing to the next round. I do want to talk about this series, though, because it felt like it was harder than it should have been. How do you reflect on what happened? 오늘 경기 생각한 것보다 조금 더 어려웠던 것 같은, 같은데 오늘 경기 청, 청평 한번 부탁드립니다. 어, 저는 그 모든 팀들이 다 우승이 가능한 전력이라 생각해서 오늘 절대 쉽게 이길 거라고 생각하지 않았고 그래도 잘 준비해서 3대 1로 승리해가지고 좋습니다. 
I personally thought every team has the potential to win it all, so I was not expecting an easy win today. And I think our preparation was good enough to pick up a 3-1 victory. Is there anything that you would like to improve upon uh, coming into the next games? Because I feel like the expectation was maybe higher coming from the World Champions. I do understand that you don't want to underestimate any of the teams, but any adjustments that you guys would like to make? 그렇다면 이제 아무래도 다음 경기도 굉장히 중요하고 또 월드 챔피언으로서 이 경기를 참여하고 계시고 또 많은 상대 팀에 대한 엄청난 리스펙을 보고 보유하고 계신 것도 알겠지만 혹시 좀 T1이 이 부분을 정말 보완하면 좋겠다 싶은 내용도 있을까요? 저희가 보완해야 되는 개선해야겠다. 음, 일단은 아직까지 그 전체적인 컨디션, 경기력이 최고치는 아닌 것 같아서 더 끌어올릴 수 있을 것 같고 그리고 또뭐 계속 언급되는 뭐 수업이나 뭐 뱀픽이나 그냥 더 좋게 계속 성장할 수 있을 것 같습니다. Um, I want to say first off our form. I cannot really say our form is at our peak level right now. I still see a lot of room to improve, so I believe we can perform better. Also, I've been mentioning this a lot, our lane swap strategy or how we play this out and also our drafting in general. What do you think of the evolution of lane swap because it's not as present as it used to be? What do you attribute this to? 지금 라인 수업 메타에 대해서 어떻게 생각하지도 궁금한데요. 사실은 초창기에 비해서 그렇게 많이 나오고 있지는 않습니다. 지금 라인 수업 메타도 조금씩 변화되고 있는데 구마유지 선수 생각은 어떤가요? 어 일단은 오늘 TL이 좀 라인 수업을 되게 적극적으로 쓰는 팀이어가지고 실제로 경기에서 좀 적극적으로 쓰기도 했고 그래서 뭔가 하다 보니까 느껴진 점이 조금 저희 팀한테 아무래도 좀 불리한 그런 메타인 것 같다고는 생각이 들었던 것 같아요. 왜냐하면 저희 바텀과 탑이 라인전이 되게 센데. 계속 좀 피해 가면서 조금 초반 단계를 쉽게 보내니까 그런 점들이 조금 아쉬웠던 것 같습니다. Um, we knew TL they are very proactively using the lane swap meta and they in fact also did today in the series. So I kind of figured this is not a good meta or but the perfect fit for T1 because our top laner, our bottom lane, are so strong in laning phase. So I think um, opponents can kind of get away with it without without playing the laning phase. So it's a minus for T1 per se, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, let's see how it evolves in the next games. Uh, the next one actually, G2 Esports rematch. Last time they took you guys to five games. What did you think of the series they played yesterday against Top Esports? And what do you identify as the main improvements on the side of G2 so far? TS전을 보셨는지 그리고 보면서 G2가 어떻게 좀 성장한 것 어떤 어느 부분이 좀 강해졌다 생각하시는지 그리고 G2전 어떻게 보고 계신가요? 어 G2가 어, 어 잠시만요 처음 질문 맞죠? G2가 어느 부분을 잘 수정해서 아, 테스트전 한것 같은지 아 G2 경기는 일단 챙겨봤고요 당연히 어 되게 무섭다고 생각이 들었고 G2가 경기력이 좋아져서 TS를 이겼다기보다는 저는 G2랑 맞붙었을 때 G2가 충분히 너무 강한 팀이라고 생각했기 때문에 맞붙기 전에 좀 G2의 승리를 어느 정도 예측도 했어가지고 이번에 근데 저희가 이겼던 팀이니까 이번에 매치 저희가 그냥 잘 준비해서 하면 이길 수 있을 거라 생각합니다. Um, I don't want to say G2 won or got the win over TS because they got better. I just thought after playing G2 series, I was like, they're actually very strong. They were already really strong. So uh, even before the G2 series, I was expecting them actually coming out on, on top. So I was not too surprised them, you know, performing that well. So uh, it's going to be very important and also exciting rematch for us. A couple of words on the bot lane, specifically Hansama Mikies. What makes them special in what they've been doing so far at MSI? 그러면 한스 사마 미키엑스 바텀 듀오 어느 점이 강점이고 그들만의 특별한 점이라고 생각하시는지 궁금하네요. 음 일단 그들이 쓰는 좀 특별한 픽들, 뭐 드레이븐이라든지 뽀삐 서포시라든지 아니면 뭐 코그모까지도 볼수 있다고 생각하는데 저희 팀은 바텀 저희 팀 바텀 상대로는 그런 픽들 어느 정도 억제가 가능해가지고 잘하면 될것 같습니다. Um... I want to say their unique bottom lane picks like Draven, also Bobby Support, and also Kogmo could be on the list. But you know, going up against us uh, will kind of deny some of those crazy picks. So it's going to be a very exciting match. Exciting match for sure. Until we're again, Sam Nida. Thank you so much, Kuma. And Jisun, thank you so much for the translation. Sam Nida.
Yeah, and Hansama is going to buy LDR now, Gumayushi, <laughs> so... Lord Dominic just, uh, just so you know. Um, Gumayushi is also our oppo player of the series, and he Let's talked go. a bit about lane swaps also, Emily. Yeah, I think uh, he brought up a really good point about T1, right? And that they really like to destroy their opponents in lane. And so it is... I, I appreciated that he admitted that it was a disadvantage for his team, right? Like, he's like, our bot lane is really strong, our top lane is really strong, and likes to play these, like, insane power picks. Someone that also looked good in a lot of these fights was Zeus on that Camille flank in the game one, on the vein, which TL did not ban in game, game five. Um, but Guma, I want to reward him for being the most consistently good player across mm. all four games. And that's something that T1 desperately needs, I think, especially to his point where they are dealing with how they still want to react to teams that will lane swap on them. Yeah, and they're making more mistakes than we're used to. That's why the consistency is huge here. Funny thing, just looking at all these replays, you know another thing that makes lane swaps harder? Taking like one teleport into every game. And I guess the, the Orin gave him the second TP, which helped a little bit. Um, but when Zeus, his vein was good later, but they had to navigate a lot of difficult situations in the, in the swap game when he wasn't able to teleport like Impact would. Yeah. Every single one of these clips we're seeing though, Guma's near full health, he's playing very safe while still maximizing his damage, and that's what he does best. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say it's not, wasn't just in this series, it's been uh, yeah. The entire bracket stage, he's really right? Good. It's, it's, it's he's really, good. really, really good. Let's take a look at the bracket and how it stands now. Um, tomorrow we're going over to a non-elimination series, but an advancement one after oh. uh, we did see um, TL knocked out just today. This is the upper bracket. We will get the rematch of G2 versus T1. And tomorrow we will get Beetle G versus oh, Gen G. I'm so excited. Let's I go. I've been looking forward to this series. For those that don't know, Gen G is the team I did pick to win the entire tournament. We'll see how I feel about that after tomorrow's series. But I'm so excited to see these two teams go up against each other because of their play styles, because of the way they each see the game. I think it's going to be a banger. You don't have to be afraid. It's not elimination for Gen G. I know, so right? I just got to have you, a fun yeah, time. Yeah. I love both teams. It's going to be great. Yeah. Four teams left, four best of five. How do we get here? A lot happened, Jot. We played a lot of League of Legends. Oh, we we didn't play any, but... We played a lot of League of Legends. We've yeah. watched a ton. Yeah. We've talked numerously. Yeah. <laughs> numerously? I'm running out of unique words. I had to make use of what Is this a contest? Sense. So, one LPL seed left, one EMEA seed left, and two LCK teams. Um, when the LCK traditionally has not been able to win this tournament. But this time, the odds are stacked in their favor if they can make it happen. But that's what I love about MSI. We don't know what's going to happen. Well, we do know that we will be back tomorrow um, at 11 a.m. Central European Summertime, 5 a.m. EDT Gen G versus BLG. And one more thing, uh, Tanya and Javi, congratulations on your wedding. I'm very sorry I can't be there because I'm always covering League Aww. of Legends. Mucha suerte, felicitaciones a vosotros, and I'll see you when I get back. But uh, good night, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. I don't know them, but that sounded very sweet. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the Mid-Season Invitational 2024. Let's go again. T1 versus TL. The loser goes home. Yo, guys, today we play some confident League of Legends, guys, OK? Like, this T1 is ready? the worst T1 I've ever yeah. seen in my life. Okay. <laughs> Tofu's all out pulls Zayus under the tower. He has the flash. Cool J is there, not back with the keepers ready, but up to you across the wall. I got Pope. 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 I got Nice. From Kerry, the dawning shadow, not enough for Zeus. Tries to astral flight, will escape for a moment, but Fake is here to shut him off. Now we can just meet. Oh, what was that? And Fanta is dead. Nice. Kerry does have to use as much as Faker. Oh, Faker caught up. Death charge, stretch line locked up. Faker almost falls. The Inferno trigger will bury T1. Through all the circles of hell, Dante sends them down. Yes. Baker, he got a charm. Baker got a charm once again, and it's APA who shut down. Impact force away, Cataclysm, they're gonna get it! Oh, they're gonna get it! Team Lequin against Stormarts! 50 50 as OT dives in, but Ona says not today! Death charge, and where's Zayas even gonna go? You don't get an opportunity to move as they manage to lock up Baker. The seismic shove doesn't hit, but the all out is everything! I don't get out of the Nice! Let's go!
I'm dealing with the little thing that but now he's going into his demise. Last the breath will lock him up for a second, and the dawning shadow spelt his doom. Call JJ falls back to the fountain, and T1 will extinguish the hopes of an A and have a date with destiny against G2.